A very Merry Christmas to you all. NORAD, the American Air Defense Center, is on high alert tonight because they are tracking a well-known flying object. <laughs> and this intruder into the most closely guarded airspace in the world comes to us directly from the North Pole and is heading right for our chimneys. It is Santa, the saint of stuff. <laughs> Tonight, Norad will be broadcasting his whereabouts the whole night and we can only hope that their trigger fingers will stay relaxed or this year's Christmas will end in a fiery explosion that lights up the night sky. The Santa, as we know him today, the jolly white bearded old man in the red suit, was invented by the quintessential American soda company to boost the sales of their sugary, bubbly black drinks. And in the times after the Second World War, when the dreams of suburban prosperity became reality for more and more people, Christmas lost its predominantly religious meaning and it became the holidays. It's a time of the year when everybody hits the stores and buys stuff as if there was no tomorrow. And Santa has always been the icon of unrestrained consumerism ever since. And every year Santa fills the voids in our lives with more and more stuff. But Santa's sled is not loaded up like it used to be in times past. American dreams of suburban prosperity, like they used to be, had a rather painful clash with reality. Back in the good old days, Daddy would work and Mom would stay home and build a nest. And the money Daddy brought home was enough to pay for mortgage, vacation, college education, and big gas-guzzling cars made in Detroit. But today's markets are globalized, and Daddy competes with a Chinese guy who works 12-hour shifts for a bowl of rice. And that makes very few very rich, but it's bad news for everyone who does not belong to their select circles. In globalized times, Santa turns out to be a tricky saint. And tonight, NORAD can crank up the power of their radio antennas and broadcast Santa's position as much as they want. But tonight, there is an increasing number of poor children that Santa will pass by. And we're not talking India or China or Bangladesh, we're talking United States, Washington, Port Angeles, the street where you live. Presents are not for everyone. Presents are only for those who can still afford them. And in a night in which we passionately celebrate stuff, it becomes painfully clear to many that they have fallen by the wayside, that they are no longer able to compete in the red race for the perks of the Western way of life. Charitable organizations raise money so that poor children will receive a gift. But no matter how generous their members are, they can't keep up with the masses of people that the market chews up and spits out. And the trend is likely to continue, and next year Santa will have to service a lot less houses than this year. And here we arrive at the fundamental difference between the holidays and Christmas. Unlike Santa, Jesus comes to everyone, every year. In this Christmas night, the Word of God became flesh and took the form of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the incarnation of the Word of God, a speaking Torah, a walking revelation intended to bridge the gap between a broken and sinful humanity and God, our Father in heaven. In Jesus, God reaches out to us to take us by the hand and to never ever let go again. In God coming to earth, humanity is able to grasp the radical, abundant, and unending love of God for God's creation. And God chose to be born to the most vulnerable people that could be imagined. A little baby, born to an unmarried teen who was destined to become the wife of a poor man. There is no room at the inn for inconsequential and utterly expendable people like them. <clears throat> not then, not now. 
And the, the scriptures, they call Jesus a tecton. That's Greek for day laborer. Traditionally, we call him a carpenter, and we understand a carpenter to be a skilled craftsman, an honorable position in our culture. But in the social hierarchy of Jesus' time, a tecton is below a peasant. In that agricultural society, a tecton is a peasant who has lost his land and has to hire out his labor. The life of a tecton is a little bit like the life of the Spanish-speaking gentlemen that hang out at the Home Depot parking lot, hoping that you need some cheap help with your next home improvement project. Jesus, as his father before him, will never own any material goods worth mentioning. When they're lucky, the work of the hands will sustain them on a very basic level, but it will never ever be enough to climb the social ladder. People like Jesus die early and they die exhausted, destitute and poor. They die like the vast majority of people who have ever lived on this planet. Christmas means that God becomes human in the midst of those who are the least of their societies. God shares the fate of all those who see Santa only from behind. For God in Christ, nobody is too destitute, too unimportant, or too unproductive to fall through the cracks of God's grace. The birth of Christ in the little town of Bethlehem is a continued spiritual awakening. Jesus is born again and again in this and in every night in which humans are willing to open the ends of their hearts to welcome in the humble tectum and with him the Spirit of God. When Santa has gone back to the North Pole producing new stuff for those who are still affluent next year, Jesus remains here with us. Christ is a manifestation of God's never-ending love and his abundant grace. And when we let Christ in our hearts, then our priorities will shift. Indeed, our world will change. In Christ, we will find a new dream of a world that is sustainable, a world where all have enough, a world that makes its stuff in harmony with creation and in harmony with humanity a world that is just. A world, when we imagine a saint of stuff, we make sure that that Santa will visit every house and hovel on his way around the world. A world where no child and no adult in this Christmas night needs to face the realization that their lives don't matter and that they have been cast aside by a society that knows little mercy. With Christ in our heart, we become agents of God's grace. We will be conduits of goodwill towards the human race, and we will pour the love we first received from God back out into the world again. By following the man of Galilee, we proclaim the good news that the life circle of all humans ends with our return into God-loving embrace. And then we will live, leave all our human possessions behind. And we will just bring our hearts, our faith, and ourselves. May this holy night be the night in which Christ is born within you. And may you always feel Christ's love in your life. And please... Do enjoy the stuff you get. <laughs> and enjoy the stuff you give. May all your Christmas gifts be tokens of love, and may they bring joy into the hearts of those who receive them. Christ is born. Have a very Merry Christmas. Amen. <laughs>